I love cooperating. That's why I usually go the speed limit. Some don't believe that. My wife is giving me the eye. But I'm cooperating in many ways. And when you cooperate, things go better. I'm so happy that our kids have cooperated with us this morning in the sense that they are providing really the best part of this program. I'm going to be giving us the opportunity to continue looking at a piece of scripture, but then I'm also uh, enamored with another piece that I want to share with you this morning because it has to do with a father and a son in a very difficult situation. Let's put it this way. What brings me joy, what I had the opportunity of doing, many of you are having the opportunity of doing today. You're being with your kids. Thanks for coming home, Matthew. That was awesome. He surprised his dad. He came home early. It was so cool. Cooperated with his mom, the secret agent in the, in the business, and surprised dad with an early arrival home. For You know, that's the sort of thing we need to do more of, right? We need to surprise people with things that bring joy. And I hope that you being here today and what you're about to see with the kids will also bring you joy. But I also want to commemorate this moment by saying that, that God talks to us as parents. The question is, are we listening? The story that grabs a hold of my attention uh, right now, hey kids, when was the last time that your father said, I have to make you into a sacrifice. We've got one person over here who said, what? You don't understand. Okay, well, <clears throat> Abraham, you see, how, who, who said that? You said that? So you know the story I'm about to tell? Really? But did you, do you know how Abram felt? That's what's for the adults to know. Imagine the joy that you're feeling right now. Imagine that you have said yes to God in your life. And here is the result of your love. In the name of God, you have produced other human beings. And that same God who, who brought love between you and your spouse... now comes to you and says, I want you to sacrifice. I want you to sacrifice. And not just any sacrifice. I want you to do a sacrifice that you have seen in the nations around you that do not follow me. They sacrifice their children on their altars. And you, as a follower of the one true God, have always said, I don't do that. But now your God is saying, I need a sacrifice and I need your one and only son. Well, it wasn't his one and only. It was his one and only by Sarah. It was the promised one. Zachary, for a little while, you were your daddy's only son, right? But then that other guy came along, right? We like him, though, don't we? He's good, huh? It's nice having a little brother. <laughs> imagine, imagine, though, that, 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 you know, God told your dad to take your little brother and go up on a high mountain. And do something terrible. How would you feel? He doesn't know. It's unspeakable. It's unspeakable to think of that the God of heaven would actually ask his man, the guy that was supposed to be representing him here on earth, to do this thing. 
And so the story goes, and the kids know the story. What, what happened? Abram gets up in the morning early, and he takes Isaac with him. What does he take with him? Donkey? Wood? Anything else? A knife? Um, yes. Halfway up the mountain, what does his son say to him? He's very good at accounting, by the way. Isaac, have you heard of the accounting firm Isaac and Sons? He does an accounting. We have the wood. We have the knife. But where's the lamb? You got to have a lamb to sacrifice, Dad. And parents... I want, you to, I want you to feel, I want you to feel the, the trust and the faith in what Abram says next. What does he say? God will provide. If there's nothing else you teach your kids, based on our lesson study today of Ezra and Nehemiah, if there's nothing else we pass on to our kids, it is this one thing God will provide. He did. And He will. He will provide. That's what Abraham said to Isaac God will provide a lamb. But it was not before. They got to the top of the mountain. And there Abraham went through the actions that he knew he had to go through. He made an altar. He took the wood that he had brought with him and he put it on the altar. And then according to the pictures that are there and people's ideas about what happened next, we, we do know this, Isaac didn't run away. Was he bound? Did he just get up on the altar by himself? We don't know. But when I was visiting St. Petersburg, Russia, I saw a Rembrandt that struck me because it is of this moment that we are talking that Rembrandt paints the picture because Abram goes through with what happens next. He is in the act of bringing the knife down. This is the picture that Rembrandt paints. His face is turned up like this and the knife is falling out of his hands because the angel has grabbed a hold from above, has grabbed a hold of his hand and has stayed the execution. Isaac is lying there waiting for the knife. It is enough. God says, it is enough. Now I know that you trust me because you were willing to give me your son. Now I know. Why do you think God did this? He was teaching the patriarch of the three Abrahamic religions, he was teaching him that this is exactly what he himself, God himself, was going to do. Because in that very next moment, the fulfillment of Abraham's words came true. He hears a rustling in the thicket. And he looks over and there is a ram that had not been brought by him. We talked about that in the lesson too. It's not of our doing we didn't bring the lamb. This is God who brought the lamb. It's caught in the thicket. It cannot get away. And in a moment's notice, he knows that this is what he is to do. He takes the ram and he sacrifices the ram in place of his son. So when I say to you, the joy came down at Christmas... I want you to know that Abraham knew that joy. 
It was the joy of salvation, the joy of relief from having to give up his son because God gave up his own. I don't know about you, but that is the import, that is the invasion that happens in Bethlehem. It's an invasion of God into human history, and he brings his son. And that is why I'm here to tell you, this is God's ordained plan to save the world. He is providing the ram caught in the thicket. He has a plan. And this was the, the, the invasion point. It gets, it gets noted by shepherds. It gets noted by magi. It gets noted by people far and near. And yet, his own people did not believe. The Bible says they received him not. So what about it? Another year has gone by. We, we've revolved around the sun one more time, and here we are again. Yes, 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 I know. There's lots of us who know this is, this is probably not the time in the year when Jesus was born. I understand that, but I am saying here we go around again and we've come to this moment when we stop and we kneel in the wonder and the joy of the babe in Bethlehem. Now as our kids perform this for us, may we enter into the same joy that Abraham had that moment when he didn't need the knife anymore, he didn't need the altar, he didn't need the wood, he could take the ram in its place and do as God had commanded. It's such a relief, it is such a joy, it is such a gift. Amen.